I operate an S Corp for my business. Uh, just started it last year. Am I required to pay myself a salary? Now that is an excellent question. Uh, just a little bit of background for the rest of you guys out there. As you operate an S Corp, that is just a regular corporation uh, that you have made an S election so that the corporation doesn't pay tax on its own. Uh, very common for small business owners who may be the only owner of the business to form an S Corp uh, because then they have what's called pass-through taxation, uh, which basically means whatever is earned at the company passes through to the tax return of the individual rather than having to pay corporate tax. Um, a very good idea and it certainly makes it a little bit less complicated. The S Corp still has to file its own tax return, a Form 1120S, uh, but there's a little bit of a difference on how that entity pays tax. Now back to your specific question, uh, you are required to pay yourself a reasonable salary. Uh, the reasonableness is, is always a good question uh, because the IRS wants to leave it a little bit open for interpretation. Uh, but again, the key is reasonable. Uh, first thing to keep in mind, since last year was your first year of the business, and I'm not sure exactly the detail of your question here, so I'll answer it both ways just in case. If the S Corp is just getting up and going, so you don't actually have any earnings, for example, maybe you just started the S Corp in November, and so you haven't even had time to cover your startup expenses yet. Uh, if a corporation is not earning money, then certainly the IRS doesn't have a requirement for the key shareholder for you uh, to have a salary being paid to yourself because the corporation doesn't have any money to pay you a salary. So just the fact that you have no salary not by itself is a problem. Okay, now assume the better scenario and I hope this is the scenario you're in and that is you do have earnings in your S Corp for 2010. Uh, the IRS does want to see a reasonable wage paid to you for the services you have provided to the company. The key point here is, and you probably know this, but the key point here is the salary that you pay yourself is subject to payroll tax. That's FICA and Medicare, both employee and employer portions. So that's important. The earnings that flow through from the S Corp to your personal tax return uh, that have that pass through taxation that are over and above the wages you pay yourself are not subject to those payroll taxes. So it's actually better for you as the taxpayer to have the earnings flow from the S Corp without payroll taxes, but that's where the IRS's reasonableness comes in, and that may be the point of your question. Again, if that's true, you do need to have a reasonable wage, uh, because if you don't, what you're in effect doing is just avoiding those payroll taxes, and that's what the IRS is really looking out for. Uh, so ultimately, long term, I know your S Corp is going to be successful. I know you're going to have earnings from that S Corp. So point blank, yes, you do need to pay yourself a reasonable salary based on the services you provide to the S Corp. So hopefully, hopefully that's helpful. Okay, next question here. Um, how much will, be, will I be penalized if I take money out of my 401k plan? Uh, now that's a really good question. We got a whole lot of questions of that the last couple of days. Uh, through Mahalo.com um, because I think a lot of people had um, a tough year last year. You know, we talk a lot about the economy and things are very tough, uh, so a lot of people did have to take money out of their 401k plan. So the first thing to keep in mind, I'm going to go to a publication here to point you in the right direction. Uh, publication 590 has a lot of information about individual retirement accounts. Uh, the first thing to keep in mind is when you take money out of a qualified retirement plan like your IRA, it will be taxable income for you. Uh, you will need to include that on your tax return and pay regular federal income tax. So don't forget to include that. But in addition to that, uh, if you have taken it out early, if you're younger than 59 and a half years old, then that is going to be considered an early withdrawal. So in addition to being included on your tax return for regular payroll or for regular tax, you also may have an additional penalty in the form of 10% more tax. Um, now the, the key point there is if you're under age 59 and a half, uh, it is going to be considered an early withdrawal. Uh, if you're over 70 and a half, uh, now you, you are required to start taking those distributions. Uh, so if you're between age 59 and 70 and a half, then that 10% penalty is not going to apply. 
Uh, but you can see on this publication, there's lots of information here. Uh, now, if you have taken that money out, the main thing I want you to consider, are there are a number of exceptions to that 10% penalty. So if you go to this publication, uh, you'll notice there at the number four um, on IRAs, there's some uh, early withdrawal penalties. And I'm gonna go to this really fast so you can see it here. Uh, when we get down to the bottom on page 52, uh, you'll see here are the early distributions. You see right over here to the left. Uh, and that's the additional 10% penalty that you may be subject to if you're under age 50 and a half. Now the main thing I want you to be aware of is there are a number of exceptions to that penalty. You see over here to the right, the most common exception we have that most people qualify for is if you have unreimbursed medical expenses that otherwise would have been deductible on your Schedule A. Or if you have distributions from your 401k that are not more than the cost of your health insurance. Uh, so most of us have health insurance and most of us certainly have some medical expenses. So if you had that early withdrawal, number one, make sure you include it on the 2010 tax return. Uh, then before you just include the penalty, uh, go to this, this publication 590, look on page 52 and review these exceptions. And hopefully you've had enough medical expenses or health insurance so that you can avoid that extra 10% penalty. Uh, and that'll certainly save you a lot of money uh, if, you had, if you indeed had to take that early withdrawal from your 401k plan. Uh, so hopefully that'll be helpful for you.